everyone. Thank you for listening to the Full of Joy podcast today. This is episode number 15 and I can't believe that there's already 15, but I also kind of feel like I can't believe that there's only 15. So two weeks ago, I started a new series on relationships and since I just got married, I thought it would be a good time to talk about dating, relationships, and marriage here on the podcast. And before we get started, my relationship with Brett is definitely not perfect and it's probably very different than your relationship or maybe we can relate in a lot of ways but I want this podcast to be a starting point for discussion so please leave me a comment or a rating anywhere you listen to the podcast or on social media I would love to hear from you guys. So in today's episode, I want to talk about the time before we were married and the three things that we talked about before we got married. So this is all about the time when we were engaged. And if you want to hear our full engagement story, Brett actually told that whole story on my YouTube channel. So that is over on the Francesca Borman YouTube channel, or maybe I'll be sharing some of the parts that he left out of that story in some of my next episodes when I talk about wedding planning and engagement and all that type of stuff. So be on the lookout for that. But today we're talking about this time of preparation and the things that we did and talked about to prepare ourselves to step into this new role as each other's husband and wife. So let's get started. So Brett and I were married by a really cool guy and Brett's family and kind of extended family has really close ties to this pastor. And every time I had met this pastor or seen him, he always really stood out to both of us as just someone that we definitely wanted to be around. And we were just kind of curious about him. And we just always thought that this pastor was really cool. So when Brett and I were looking into our options of who would marry us at our wedding, we thought this guy would be pretty cool. So his name's Jonathan and we reached out to him to see if he would help us out and he was in. So before you get married, you can do a marriage prep or you can speak with a mentor about marriage. And we've both kind of heard about marriage prep before, but we really didn't have any idea what it would be like or if it was something that we wanted to do, if it was absolutely necessary. But Jonathan encouraged us to meet him and do it. So we went with it. And I think we met with him like four or five times before our wedding day to have these marriage prep meetings. And it was so fun for both of us I think those meetings were really interesting and like such a fun part of being engaged and I really enjoyed all of it and all of the benefits of that so I wanted to share what we learned in those meetings with you guys and I think that these topics are good to discuss for any relationship but especially if you feel like you want to get married So I'm going to be really real and vulnerable and honest with you guys in today's episode. I really, you know, I always am, but in today's episode, we really get down to it. So for me, it was a big transformation to get fully comfortable with Brett. And in our relationship, we both really got comfortable after we got engaged and more so every day since then, of course, just like any relationship. But seeking comfort with a spouse was a totally new territory for me. And, you know, I trusted Brett wholly and I love his advice and the calmness that he brings to me. But I've never been married. I've never lived with a guy. I've never fully gave my heart as a wife to a husband. It's all just like totally new. So I have to admit that I didn't just automatically become super comfortable just because we were heading towards marriage. I actually was feeling uncomfortable. And I want to share that because I think that a lot of young girls like me can relate. You know, I grew up with one sister, no boys were ever around and we didn't have any cousins or friends that were boys really. And, you know, I had boyfriends when I got older, but I've just never been totally comfortable around boys or in a relationship. I think that personally, I thrive more when I'm surrounded by women, which is probably why I love my job so much because I just get to relate to you guys all day. But because of what we learned in these meetings and what I'm going to share with you guys today, because of those conversations that we had to prepare for this closeness that marriage brings, I got very comfortable with Brett and I felt more known and at ease. So getting comfortable with Brett as my husband was something I really wanted and something that I really had to work on. I wanted to be able to fully just be with my husband 
and not be any sort of tense version of me. And it's a huge transformation to see Brett as my boyfriend and fiance and to now see Brett and value Brett as my husband. That's just major. That's huge. So this is what we learned in our marriage prep meetings and how it made me more comfortable, calm, and unbelievably thankful for marriage. So we go to our first meeting and Brett and I are both a little curious about what these will be like. Like we were thinking, will he be telling us things we already know or will we feel judged? And neither of those things happened. He made us feel very comfortable and basically said he wants to start conversations. That's all. He wanted to help us start conversations. And, you know, I thought easy enough. I love talking to Brett and hearing about him and vice versa. So these meetings started conversations about our families, about our childhoods, our futures, our expectations, money, sex, vacations, home life, downtime, really everything like nothing was off topic in these meetings. So we covered a lot and we got to be really honest with each other about these topics that typically don't just naturally come up in daily conversation. So basically, Jonathan was there to start the conversation and to listen to us. So he would listen and help us to fully understand what the other one was saying. You could tell he had done this a billion times. I think he has like hundreds of weddings a year. So he's very comfortable with the newlywed relationship. And it was so beautiful and interesting to talk through all of these things. And Jonathan would encourage us to talk about the meetings on our drive home to which naturally we probably already would but he was like no really like talk about this on the way home and that kind of helped at least me not feel embarrassed almost to like keep talking about it like I want to hear more and I want to share more like can we keep talking about this so having his like you know encouragement for us to like keep going and like dig deeper and like keep talking about this and like keep having these conversations that really helped me And, you know, in order for me to feel comfortable, Brett has to know me. So Brett has to know the vulnerable and embarrassing me, not just some parts of me. Like he gets all of it. (laughs) Brett gets all of it and I get all the same parts of Brett. And it's amazing. So I chose three topics to share with you guys that Brett and I really connected to and we still talk about often in our marriage. So these are my three lessons from Jonathan. So number one is the top five things that we both want to have in our spouse. So after one of our meetings, Jonathan had us each do homework separately and create a list of the top five things that we both want in our spouse. And we couldn't share our five things until the next meeting. So we each made a list of five things that we need. And both of our answers were so different and so us. So when we shared our list at the next meeting, I remember listening to Brett's and it making so much sense. And I could totally see why Brett needs or wants these five things from his wife. And Jonathan would just listen and like ask deeper questions about the five topics to really help us understand the meaning behind these top five things and fully understanding each other made us feel so thankful that we get to be that for each other and it just made it so obvious how beautiful it is that Brett and I get to love each other like that and that no one else can give us those five things in the way that we can as husband and wife and I want to share my top five things to help you get started if you also want to make this list in your relationship so for example I have that I want Brett's attention and to me I feel loved when I get to fully enjoy someone So when they're not half on their phone, half watching TV, half with me, I really feel so loved when I have Brett's full attention. So we make sure to have dates that are phone free. And there are other times where we just give to each other and have quality time. It's really simple. And that's just one of those things where Brett knows that I really appreciate when we're just fully with each other and fully connected and like face to face, like no phones, no screen between us, no nothing. I really love those moments. So Brett, make sure to give me those. Another one of my top five things is appreciation. And 
I want to help. I want to be helpful. I want to be a helpful person and I want to make Brett's life easier and happier. So I will give to him in ways that I think he will appreciate. And naturally, Brett is so kind and always says he's thankful for me and what I give to our marriage. But having him know that him sharing his appreciation is actually really loving to me. Like, I love that. And I need that from my spouse. I want to feel appreciated. So since Brett knows that, he makes sure that I feel that way. So he makes sure that I feel appreciated and lets me know all the time how thankful he is for me. So I also want to share one of Brett's just to give you guys some ideas and kind of help you guys think even from a man's perspective. So one of Brett's top five is respect. So Brett feels love from me when I show him respect. And I want to kind of share ways that I show respect towards him. And I kind of shared some of these in my episode number 13 and 14 when I answered questions about relationships. But I kind of want to touch on it again here. So ways that I show respect towards my husband are by listening to his ideas and listening to his points of view on things, especially when we disagree, because Brett and I really think in such different, different ways. And like we pretty much will get to the same point but we get there in such different ways so it's really important to me that I listen to him and it's important to him that I really hear him out and you know I allow him to be Brett and I don't make fun of him and you know Brett is funny and doesn't take himself too seriously so we laugh at each other a lot but ultimately he knows that I respect him in his heart and his mind and I love the way that he thinks and I let him know that all the time and I think that a big part of this whole practice is letting the other person know how you feel and maybe even like over communicating at times I don't see the harm in over communicating especially as newlyweds So we made our list and our top five things that both of us need from a spouse and we loved this practice. So we actually typed out each other's top five things and we printed it out and we taped it inside one of our cupboards that we see every day. So when I was younger, my parents had a small note in their coffee mug cabinet that said, good morning, this is God, I will be handling all of your problems today. And I always loved that they did that and you know, they both open that cupboard every morning and see that promise. So I told Brett about this and we decided to do the same thing, but with our top five lists. So every few weeks we'll be sitting in the kitchen together and we'll open that cupboard and go through the five things and we'll check in with each other on them and just make sure that we both feel that way if there's anything we want to change. And it's just so fun. We haven't changed it yet. I feel like the five things that we chose are pretty much like they're so core us right now and like so they're just perfect for us right now and it seems to be really helping us and it just kind of helps us stay accountable for the way that we're treating each other and even treating ourselves because ultimately if I'm treating Brett in a bad way that means that like something's going on with me so we have to figure that out you know so it kind of just helps us stay really you know in good communication with each other. Lesson number two is the one, one, one rule. So Jonathan gave us this idea and I thought it was so fun and he does this with his wife and he encouraged us to do the same and it is one night a week, one day a month, one week a year. So one night a week we will get together, whether that is a date or a walk or just, you know, one night a week just for the two of us doing whatever you want, just having time, just the two of you. And then one day a month. So what that be a day trip or a day day or a staycation or just like one of the days on the weekend one day a month that is just you know separated for just the two of you no other couples no other friends just the two of you enjoying each other so you'll get one day a month every month and I feel like when you think of it like that it doesn't sound like it's that big of a promise it doesn't sound like it's that big of a commitment but actually finding that time and being intentional with your one night a week one day a month is actually kind of hard like once you like try to actually plan into your schedule so I definitely encourage you to plan that and then there's also one week a year. So one full week, just the two of you, whether that is vacation or like if you have to work every day after work is just the two of you for a full week, whatever you can make work, do it and just give each other one week a year just for you guys. It's simple. It's easy. And I really like having that one, one, one rule because it's so easy to remember. You're like, oh yeah, we need our one night a week this week. Let's do it. So we talked about how we can make love and feel love 24 seven. And you're probably thinking like, what? how we work, we're busy, we have separate schedules, we have separate lives, but we discussed ways that we can make each other feel loved 24-7 and the secret is little things. So the first thing is thoughtfulness and just being thoughtful 
with each other. Think about what that other person needs or could want or something that could make their day just a little tiny bit better. It's little things like don't overcomplicate it. And by little things, I mean, look each other in the eyes. Like when you're talking, look at that person and like connect with them for like a second. Just connect with your spouse or um, Jonathan gave us the idea to leave a nice note for each other, whatever that looks like to you. If that is like a post-it note, like in the kitchen with like your breakfast, or if that is a text throughout the day, if you guys are like work at different places, like send a nice text that you're thinking about them and that you can't wait to see them later, or you're like, you're excited to make them dinner later, you know, say that they look pretty, say they look amazing. Like when they come downstairs, like ready to go to work, be like, wow, you look great. Like just connect with them and build them up and listen to them. If they come home and they want to talk after work, listen and ask questions and just be intentional with your time and be thoughtful. I think that little moments of thoughtfulness go such a long way. The next idea that Jonathan gave us was scents and to wear scents that the other person likes and light candles that you both like or if there's a specific scent that really brings this person back to the time you got married or the time you got engaged or like your first date perfume or something like wear that and let them know like why you're wearing that and like how special it was that you're wearing that for them or you know if you like candles go pick out your candles together and then you can be like oh this is going to be our like bedroom candle this one is like our living room candle like pick out your candles together and be intentional with them and like if your husband really likes the smell of like a clean kitchen like clean the kitchen for him and like wipe the counters before he's gonna come and eat dinner um or if you really like the smell of like your husband after a shower let him know and be like i really love the way your soap smells like oh my god it smells so good then he's gonna be like oh my god well i'm gonna go (laughs) use my soap all the time so it's just like little moments little moments of like letting the other person know like hey i like the way you smell that goes a long way And then the next one is visual. So this kind of works out for both of us. Brett and I talked about what types of clothes we like the other person in. Not that they have to wear this, but Brett and I both like each other in tight clothes. Obviously, we're attracted to each other. I want to see like Brett's arms and stuff. So Brett and I both like each other in tight clothes. And thankfully, it works out because both of us like to wear tighter clothes. We like our like tighter jeans. And like I'm wearing a bodysuit right now. Like I just like tighter clothes. So that works out for us. But if your significant other does not like your clothes, maybe ask them, you know, what would you want to see me in in like one date or like one movie night at home? Like wear something that they would like and be like, hey, I'm wearing this sweatshirt because you liked it. Or hey, I'm wearing those jeans because you like them on me. Like let them know like this is a special thing that you're doing for them even if you don't like them but I want to point out like dress for you obviously I love my clothes and even if Brett didn't like them I would still wear my clothes because they make me happy and they bring me joy and I love them but I would you know make it a priority to wear something special for Brett every once in a while just so he can visually see me in something that he likes and know that I'm wearing that just for him So this next one I thought was so interesting and makes so much sense and it's about audible. So, you know, listen to music that you know they like when you're on a date with them in the car. Turn on like your spouse's or your significant other's like favorite music or favorite artist or an artist you like together. You know, turn on music that you guys like when you're making dinner and turn on a song that you like or like if there's a song that's special to your relationship like Brett and I always play like our wedding playlist there's so many songs that we played at our wedding like intentionally that we chose so whenever they come on we're like hey we cut our cake to this song it's just fun but you know going along with that I really like soft slow music so I like when Brett talks to me in a soft slow way instead of if Brett was like yelling at me in this harsh tone But I really like when Brett and I can be calm and just chill together. So having Brett have that like calm, easy voice is like so perfect. And it just makes me feel so much happier and it makes me feel comfortable. And like Brett's literal tone of voice can bring me feelings of love when I'm around Brett. It's just so crazy how that works. It's it's literally crazy how this works. Um, and if, then, you know, I'm feeling that love. I'm feeling that love even when we're not anywhere near making love. I can still feel like love from Brett. And then the last one is touch. So this is something that we actually never talked about until it was brought up at this meeting. Isn't that crazy? Like I didn't even think to talk about touch with my soon to be husband. 
just didn't even cross my mind that maybe we could talk about this. So how do you want to be touched? And not just in bed, but all day. Like when we greet each other, Brett and I, especially when we didn't live together, obviously we would greet each other every day at the door. And it's like, when you walk in that door, how do you want to be greeted by that person? Do you want a hug? Do you want a long hug? Do you want like just a, hey with a wave like what is comfortable to you for us you know we talked about it and like we both just love a big hug so we do that all the time even now when we live together like anytime Brett comes up to my office I'll stand up and give him a hug like we're just like so into holding each other especially right now as as newlyweds but talk about how you want to be touched all day so while you're driving if you're driving next to each other you know like I'm in the passenger seat and Brett's driving if he like puts his hand over where do I want his hand to go like do I want his hand to just sit on my leg do I want his hand to like touch my hair like what is comfortable for me and you know how do you want it to be touched while you're watching tv while you're walking around in public do you like to hold hands do you like kissing in public I do not I do not kiss Brett in public I think it's disgusting when people do kiss in public I'm a big fan of kissing I love to kiss okay but just not in public it really bothers me so Brett and I both feel that way and you know how to be how do you want to be touched when you're around family and be honest and your partner wants to do these things for you and they want to make you feel comfortable and loved and desired so don't be embarrassed if you're doing something that they don't like or vice versa and you have to tell them it's your spouse you are going to have embarrassing moments and you're going to get closer because of them if it makes you feel any better I was doing something that Brett didn't like and I had to change it but Brett told me and thankfully we both don't have to be in this awkward situation anymore so this helped me realize that our relationship is going to change and changes can be fun and you know I am half of our relationship and I'm allowed to think about how I want to be touched during the day and at night and this helped me understand you know what the other one wants more also I want to note that you should check in after you talk about this you know wait a few months see if these changes have happened and kind of see where you're at with them like do you like how these changes have happened do you want to change something else do you want to go back to the way it was just you know keep communicating with each other you're going to keep changing so your relationship will too Alrighty, you guys. So those are the three things that we talked about before we got married and they helped me to feel so much more comfortable with Brett as my husband and they helped me feel so much more like excited but also calm and just so prepared for marriage. And I can report back that we are happily married and it's been, oh gosh, I don't even know, like eight months of being married and I'm just loving it. We're having the time of our lives. So I really think that these conversations and these starting off points for these discussions really helped me prepare my heart and my mind and just everything for marriage, for the big transformation of marriage. So I hope that this podcast is inspiring or encouraging to you. I hope that it, you know, inspires you to start these conversations with your significant other or yourself even. It could take a lot for you to admit some things to yourself. So I hope that through listening to this 15th episode and the episodes to come on this podcast that you feel encouraged to create a place for joy in your life. I hope that you will welcome joy, invite joy, and seek days that are full of joy. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I want to invite you guys to subscribe or follow this podcast anywhere you like to listen spotify itunes or google play and follow our instagram at full of joy podcast i'll talk to you guys soon bye